everyone. Welcome to getting to know you, your business, and your life. I'm Sandy LeBlanc, Realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty, located at the Rockville Potomac office. Today, I'm here with Daniela Camaro Russell and Gabriella Russell, the mother and daughter team and owners of the Rofa Beta Gallery. The Rofa Beta Gallery is a contemporary art gallery that emphasizes Latin art and specializes in art with a socio-political content. The gallery believes that art is a tool to achieve community. So, Gabriella and Daniela, tell us about how you see art as a tool to achieve community and tell us about the Rofa Beta Gallery. Yeah, so exactly that is the point, that we see art as a, as a powerful tool to change, to produce some awareness in the society. So we work with different kind of things and we have different projects. Uh, here in, in Kelmans, we are two galleries together. Uh, it's Rofa Projects and Meta Gallery. Rofa Projects has three different kind of projects, one of them is uh, rough of art that work with abstraction and geometry that is more or less what you see behind mm -hmm. us. It's a very important tradition of, of abstraction and geometry in Latin America. We also work with Rofa Project that is specifically the part that take care of the social political art. Oh, okay. So we work with migration, sexuality, identity, um, empowerment, specifically gender. a lot of empowerment of women, gender. And talking about gender, we work with, uh, we have a project called La Morada. La Morada is the color purple of the violence against women, for the fight mm -hmm. against. Uh, and La Morana work specifically with ecofeminism, transversal and intersectoral ecofeminism. So it's a, it's a very cool project to empower a uh, woman. So the first gallery opened in Potomac, uh, Maryland, uh, in 2014, when we moved to the, to the United States. And then this new gallery here in Kelmans opened five, four, months, ago. five months ago. And then uh, because of that, we include Beta, which is the Daniela uh, part, the Daniela project. Which also is involved uh, with uh, transmitting uh, important messages to the community, in our case, uh, through urban art. Very nice. Yeah, and actually, it's something very important to mention is that our focus is Latin America. Of course, we work with some local artists, mm -hmm. but our focus is Latin America. So we work with around 45 artists from 15 different countries. Yes. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. It's a lot. I have to say that it's a very cool project. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it gives you a lot of more variety. A lot, and a lot of influence. Correct, correct. And because there are so many different techniques and, right. and themes, then we get to reach also a bigger audience in that way. You get a bigger audience and no one will come here and see the same thing over and over. Exactly, because actually uh, we are changing the exhibitions all the time. So mm -hmm. around each two months and one week, we are changing and changing the exhibition. And we, we cover different kind of things in this case this specific exhibition that, that you see around and behind us is about abstraction and, and geometry in Latin America. But before we work with portraits, before we work with reading rooms, was the, reading room was the name of the exhibition, so the power of work in the pieces of art. So a uh, different kind of very interesting things associated with the aesthetics of art because we mentioned that we work a lot with social critical art, but taking care of the, of the aesthetics. For us, the aesthetic is something really, really important. You also do sculptures, right? The sculptors, yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, now in this exhibition, for example, we have some sculptors that are sculptors to put on the wall, oh. some ones on the floor, some ones made with uh, textile art, another ones with reflection. Well, actually, in this exhibition, exactly in front of us, we have three amazing pieces of Julio Lepar, which is one of the most important artists from Latin America um, uh, that has a retrospective in the Pompidou, in different places and is one of the most uh, important artists nowadays of, of Latin America. 
Yeah, so different media, photography, sculpture, painting, um, spray, like different type of media that we work with. We have some beautiful art displayed here today, and we're definitely going to take a look at it and take a tour of it at the end of the video, of the interview. So tell me, what brought you to the United States in 2014? Uh, well, so far I live in six countries. Oh, wow. uh, and then before the United States, I lived in Canada, and I was in between Canada and the States uh, because I was uh, organizing an art exhibition here. Uh, but then the love bring me to the States because oh, okay. I met my husband, oh, and then I moved here that's for that reason. And then I continue. Um, in my case, I, I start working with fine arts. Not talking about age, but I start working with fine arts like 30 years yes, ago, so or something yes. like that. And uh, originally it was specifically with fine art associated with HIV. We are, we are mentioning the importance of the awareness of art, right? At that period of time, I was a director of a foundation that was an HIV AIDS foundation. Mm -hmm. So we uh, did art auctions to fundraise to support the foundation. Then, uh, when I moved to Brazil, I include the thing of violence against women. And then when I moved here, and I opened the, the gallery here, is also associated with, well, I mentioned that we specifically work a lot with ecofeminism. So it's associated with violence against women and health and different kind of, of, of issues that involve uh, our society. So I moved here because of that reason, but then, the project come here with me to, to start it here again and now that, that Daniela come um, well even better because then we have this second gallery to continue growing the, what we do. So what made you choose to come to the Kevins and Gatesburg for the second gallery? There this is your gallery, gallery, correct? Yes, the Bailey Gallery. So it's, it's the, the both galleries, and right. the thing is that well I decided to move to the States recently. Mm -hmm. By recently I mean like eight months ago, oh, so wow. very, very, very recently. And with that decision, we decided to open together the, the new space, joining forces of the two galleries, which is really important in creating this new family project in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, the two galleries are very different in a way, but also they have in common the uh, idea of bringing awareness towards the society with the different tools. Again, in my case, more focus on urban art, in the case okay. of, of Rofa projects with the different beautiful artists that they work with. Um, but then Kenlands is a beautiful location because it's very close to, to many parts, both Gettysburg, both Potomac. Mm -hmm. Of course, a little still closer to, to, to the sea, not, mm -hmm. not, not in Virginia. Right. <laughs> and North Potomac. And, and North Potomac. And so, of course, it's a center location for us. It's also close to the other gallery, which right. is very important because it's only 20 minutes away to the mm -hmm. other gallery. And well, this is a, a beautiful developing area. Of course, it's a, it has been developed for a long time, but we know that there are 2,500 square feet of, of retail. So it's important for us to be in an area like this. And it's a great yeah. place. And it's very important that it's close to the other gallery. So right. we are 22 minutes. From, from the other one. So actually one thing that we do is that we organize some day, our day, so maybe a group can come here and then from here we move to the other place. Yeah, I saw where there were, a group was doing a tour yeah. on the bus and they came here and they went to Potomac and then they went to La Mirada. Exactly. exactly. Right. That exactly. was kind of neat. Yeah. So that is very interesting because it's just spending your day looking out in a, in a different way. Even La Morada, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you were mentioning uh, before we start that La Morada is this beautiful project that is inside of a dollhouse. It's a, yeah, it's a sure. real size of a dollhouse that we empty, you know, the furniture for the kids and then that has gallery lights, etc. And work with ecofeminism. And because it's in the middle of nowhere, right? Then uh, it's a so, little tiny house. Exactly, but it may not be not well, like a tall person, right. but you know, it's in a real right. world size. It's real. It's, I'm it's not saying it's not tall. It's, it's real. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's beautiful, and it's cool also because we are respecting the nature. So yes. some years a family of foxes they right. come and they have the babies under the dollhouse. Right. So it's 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 beautiful because then the 
we integrate the, the fine arts with the environment. So that is also confirming the whole project right. that we have in, in Rafa Project specific. And the La Mirada is open from, uh, it's open now, it closes in February. I'm, I'm, yeah, February. yeah, uh, um, close in February right. until June, right. because those, those are the months <laughs> when the fathers, they the come, they have the babies and they actually stay living there like one month and the family come and visit them and all this. So it's a, the, the, the beautiful environment is really impressive. So, and again, it's, it's the way to continue with the whole project that we do. So it's respecting the nature, respecting women, respecting the differences. Mm -hmm. I think that that is a very, very important way to see art. Respect right. the difference and through art, open minds to create, uh, maybe sounds a bit naive, but to create a better world yes. through art. That's the way, that's the part of achieving the community. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you still have a chance to visit La Mirada because it's open until February. Yeah. yeah. So don't forget to stop by there as well. So tell me about um, the difference in the project, the difference in the art, and the difference in La Mirada. How those three things vary. I think you said art was the um, abstract. The projects are projects uh, so so the three those three projects belong right. to the whole, the whole uh, gallery of Rofa projects right and then the project of beta gallery I can start explaining that and then you continue with the Rofa projects part uh, the project of beta gallery it's also around abstraction and geometry mm -hmm. but we have a branch called Proyecto Zeta that is focused in Latin American um, urban art. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that through different media, uh, in this case stencil or uh, lettering, different type of, of, of graffiti or street mm -hmm. art, then we uh, come closer to the viewer and, and in this case bring a message that it tends to be a bit broader to the viewer because most of it is in the streets. Okay. Um, now we also have, um, together with Rofa, a project called Rota that is focused in a furniture together okay. with art, bringing together design and art uh, into the same space. In that case, then I give the, the word to my mom so that she explains then La Morada and Rofa projects and Rofa art. <laughs> Yeah, so um, specifically the, the whole project, the whole gallery is, is the ROFA, but has this area of abstraction and, and geometry because in Latin America it's very important, specifically um, Argentina, Venezuela, I come from Venezuela, so Argentina, Venezuela, Brazil were very, very important countries that changed the, the, the world talking about fine arts and then they move to, to, to Europe, etc. So the eyes of the world, finally they were in Latin America trying to see what was happening with art. So that is a very, very important tradition and this kind of pieces that we have uh, here behind the importance of the abstraction in, in art, right? And then uh, Rofa Project uh, is, is basically uh, cultural awareness, open your eyes about what is happening in the world and give you that, that power to art. So uh, in, in my case specifically, I really believe that art is always political. Yes. Even, even when it looks like it's not, mm -hmm. it is. So art is always, always political, can be from the comfortable way to not be exactly involved, mm -hmm. or can be really, really involving in what is uh, the, the, the roots of that change, right? Mm -hmm. In the case of Rofa Project, is completely political. So when we talk about ecofeminism, when we talk about racism, when we talk about differences, LGBTQ community, so it's include, it's in, right. it's inclusive. Right. Rofa projects is, is really, really inclusive. Uh, and then specifically La Morada, where we really believe that ecofeminism is is something that we have to continue putting our eyes there. And, and it's transversal and, and it's intersectorial, so it's no differences, it's not origins, uh, uh, social classes, right. nothing. It's just the ecofeminism taking care of all the right. areas as should be, and also including doing this mixture between mm -hmm. nature and, and, and woman. 
um, and actually it's interesting because there are some of our artists, their project is specifically that. Oh, wow. Art, uh, um, woman with, with nature. So it's, yeah, it's really beautiful, it's really interesting. And as I mentioned, 45 artists around, so it's a lot to see, a lot of study, a lot to learn. And of course to appreciate because yes. the beauty of the pieces are, are really incredible. Yeah, this beautiful art in here as well is really it's really beautiful. So tell me, um, you say that your work uh, comes from 30 artists in 14 different countries. How do you determine what you're going to feature when you have your exhibitions? So we normally go around one particular subject okay. and around that subject we choose the artists that go okay. accordingly to that. Um, in this case, for example, is abstraction and geometry. So, this particular artist like Raymond Romero, like uh, Javier Pelares, are artists that work with this uh, type of art. The previous show that was reading room that was related to the written world okay. or the or the languages in general. Mm -hmm. Then we had artists like Marina Vargas, different artists that approach the language in a, in a particular way, okay. even, for example, through graffiti, with the lettering. Um, and the one before was portraits. Mm -hmm. So the approach to portraits through different media, not right. necessarily to, through the regular painting, right, right. which we also had, right. but also through different media. So it, it, it revolves around the subjects that we are interested in, mm -hmm. that the are, of course, part of the, of the um, like the agenda of the gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different approach. Actually, the people that come here, many times they say, wow, I never saw something like this before. So and you see the faces, right. and they are really enjoying it, and they are, they are wow, what is this? Tell me, tell me about this, because I never saw something like this. So it's a different approach. Uh, many people said, I never saw this kind of art. I never saw this kind of, of sculptures. So I think that is um, something very refreshing. Yes. For many people that come here, it's, it's really refreshing. Uh, specifically here in Kellogg's, uh, the neighborhood, they are really happy. They say, wow, this beautiful art gallery here. So it's a, it's a different way to, to show art and also to let the people know how how all the bayari that we have in, yes. in Latin America, the quality of our artists is really really impressive, and involving all this this quantity of, of countries, um, it's bringing diversity. It's bringing diverse, diversity in in, in in us as as, yes. as people, but also in the things. Right. So that is also also very very important. Well, we travel also because we participate in some art fairs mm -hmm. around the world and that is another way to continue you know showing our artists in different parts right. of the world and also bring some of them to here right which yeah, is exactly. exactly so the richness of, of all these artists is, is really marvelous so when visitors come here what can they expect what would you how would you describe when you walk in this Art gallery. What do you, what do you expect to see? You can expect to learn a lot, which is something that I find interesting in any place that you go to. Mm -hmm. So uh, either through the different techniques that you learn to to, to appreciate, mm -hmm. in the sense of, for example, we have artists that work with thread, we have artists that work with acrylic. So regarding the material in itself and regarding the way that the pieces are made, mm -hmm. then uh, the people that come to the gallery can expect a whole lot of variety, but a whole lot of information to learn and appreciate in that sense. On the other hand, the most important part for us, I would say, is the subjects that we are transmitting and trying to, to, to show to the, to the spectator. And in that case, yeah, I don't know, last show, for example, I found very interesting even for us to learn. We learn ourselves in each show that we are showcasing. That's awesome. We had this amazing artist that works with the tarot and how to oh, interpret the yes. tarot. And then she creates through drawings like different um, tarot cards mm -hmm. and, and she revolves around numerology. I mean, you can expect yeah, a lot of, of information to, to, to learn from, I think. Yeah, I would say more or less the same thing. So a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. a lot of knowledge, no doubt. 
but I will also say that a lot of joy, yes. a lot of joy, passion, the pleasure of, of you know being in contact with this pieces and learn about that. But also the connection. We have people here that come and they cry when they see oh, a piece of art. Right? So that is also beautiful when you can develop yes. this connection with art and, and we see that to our artists. We're getting that and then that is also That's really, really important. important. That is the clue of what we are doing to, to produce these emotions in, in people. So as, as Dani said, yeah, knowledge, learning and passion yes. and love for this wonderful energy. So on a different note, what do you do when you're not directing your art galleries? Well, several Something things. Several things. Several things. <laughs> uh, travel, part is travel. Like in my case, I go to the art first. I just came back from the Venice oh. which was completely amazing. Wow. Uh, which is, is, is beautiful. We were talking about the emotions through art. Mm -hmm. So that is you can see that that is part of our life because, for example, I went to see an exhibition and when, when I saw this exhibition, I had to get out of the exhibition because I feel bad, I have a terrible oh, headache, wow. you know, it was feeling horrible. And I was fascinated with that because it's what the artist creates. You see why you watch it, you watch it, you have that So part is travel because the first, because of working, uh, and beside that, well, in my case, Cook, I think the culinary and <laughs> really the culinary and art they have a very yes. very important association and you can create all this beauty. And of course, you know, music, pets, those kind of things. <laughs> and what about you? In my case I work out. I work oh, out okay. and either yoga or running or and now I have this new hobby which I love that I'm expecting for it to become a bigger than a hobby and they started making furniture which is really that's very interesting yes, yes. making and, and uh, designing and painting so it's something that in a way gives you a release of creativity uh, that you can do with your hands which is something that is very important that is and people always need furniture yes and exactly. furniture goes with art exactly <laughs> and design exactly. because of course it's furniture but true design it's right not, right. not just a writer right and it it's also true. goes in hand with the idea of ecofeminism because mm -hmm. it's upcycled uh, furniture so, oh, wow. so that is important to give new life to, to something that already existed well that's something we can all look forward to yeah mm -hmm. So now you tease this. <laughs> exactly. So people got to come in and say, where is the furniture? <laughs> so what is something that people don't know about the gallery? Or what is something exciting that's going on that you want people to know about? That's a good question. Something that is very people uh, will, should know about the gallery. I think that probably the most, one of the most important parts uh, can be the variety that we can show, the quantity of artists that we have, the, the different approach that we have uh, with art, but also learn about Latin America. Many people, they don't know right. the quality of the right. art that we have. Uh, sometimes people associate Latin America more with art craft, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that one of the things that we do is change that that image. Latin America is, is getting more and more and more important every day talking about fine art. And I think that that is a, is a, is a very important thing to learn. Uh, we work with many artists that are part of the, that they were part of the Venice Biennale, the Havana Biennale, you know, the different Biennales around the world. But also they are part of the uh, MoMA Museum, the Whitney, the Guggenheim, the Tate mm -hmm. Modern, Reina Sofia, etc. Okay. So we work with medium career, we work with, with artists that already they have these this amazing careers, but are artists that are still young, so our prices are good. Right. So that is something important that people have to yes. know that many people are afraid about art because right. no art is so expensive and I cannot buy that. No, right. in our case it's not like that. So even when our artist has amazing careers already, I mentioned they are in several museums, are, are, new, are still young people, so our prices are very good. So we have the variety. Okay. Right? So can be, can be a important collector that want to buy a piece of Julio Lepard that probably is more expensive. But then, 
can go, uh, a young collector that is starting and cannot spend all this quantity mm -hmm. of money. So I think that that is something very important, that people have to learn or have to know that they can come and have this beautiful piece of yes. art and not leave the budget there. Right. So that is in one thing that you were mentioning, but you, you didn't actually point that we are the only gallery in the DMB area that works specifically with Latin America. Oh, wow. So that is a very important information. Right. Yeah, so in the whole people. DMB area we are the only one wow. that is focused specifically in, in Latin America with all the quantity of, of art. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. We're very proud yeah. of that. Yeah, it should be. It should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the other day come a group of the IDB, for example, mm -hmm. the Inter-American Inter Development Bank. Oh. Uh, and many people that they are from Latin America, oh, they expand, oh, and then they come, and of course they enjoy it, and they cannot believe that they exist here. So, yeah, that is, that is a very important that we are the only gallery that, that we work with that. That's very important. <laughs> so, what would you tell a young person about life if they were asking you a question, how should I live my life? How would you describe it today? Your life? A young person. I would say that with, with passion, no doubt, with mm -hmm. passion, with, with truth, always with the, with the truth in front. Well, Daniela is my daughter, <laughs> even when, when I was very young. You did! She's my daughter. <laughs> I thought you were sisters. <laughs> so I always said to Daniela, since she was a tiny girl, I always said, you are the owner of your nose, and you do with your nose whatever you want. No? If you do it with passion, yes. with honesty, and with love. Yes. So for me, a young person, that, will, that is what I will transmit. Always, you know, be nice, doing the correct thing, right. not, not damaging anybody. Right. You don't damage anybody, do whatever you want that you enjoy. Right. I think that that is the... It's beautiful. Yeah, it is, I think. In my case, I would say, I'm, I, well, to a younger person. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, to a younger person. Uh, be mindful of, of, of your body and your mental health. Both yes. are equally important, I believe. Yes, I that's very important. Because you can't do anything if you don't have the right mind. In the right and you're not healthy. Mind. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Very important. Yes. What and by art. <laughs> have we say that? By art. Yes. You know, Not <laughs> art in your house. Well, actually, I'm a little bit joking saying that, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Because art helps you to heal. And that is something that more than demonstrate that art really help you to heal. So I put you a smile on your face. I, I, I give you peace. The art give you love. So I would say, yeah, be correct, be honest, and buy art. And I think art changes your mental attitude. I mean, because I have art in my house, and when I look at art and the art in my home, it just changes, you know, what I'm thinking or makes me feel different. Correct. Because it's it's not a distraction, but it's it's beautiful and it just makes you feel beautiful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Art and music, they're yeah, both right. very important. Very that. important. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Daniela and Gabriela. It's been a pleasure being here, and we're going to show you some of the art that is being displayed currently. But do not forget to stop by 361 Main Street in the Kentlands to view Daniela's art gallery. And the art gallery in Potomac, the address is. Well, this one is uh, Rofa Projects and Beta Gallery. Right. So here we have the two galleries. Right. And there we have uh, just Rofa Projects, which is 10008 Hemswell Lane okay. in, in Potomac. And as we say, we can also organize it. Right, to we go to both places. places. Well, it's been really a great pleasure talking to see you. And if anyone would like, you know anyone that would like to be featured, or even you would like to be featured, please get in touch with me. This is Sandy LeBlanc with Caldwell Banker Realty at the Potomac Rockville office. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. This exhibit is called Impure Geometries. We have eight different artists from Latin America. We will also show you our showroom. This is Raymond Romero, an artist from Venezuela. It's a beautiful uh, work because he works with threads. All these pieces are made out of threads. So each line, each color is a, a different um, thread that he uses and then he develops these beautiful dolls that are also made with threads 
and that in a way reminds us of Vikings' beautiful, uh, empowered woman. They're actually called super power girls. On the other hand, we have Javier Velázquez. He's an artist from Mexico. He works kind of with hyperrealism in a way, but uh, focused in a way that it reminds of, of, of reminds us of abstraction and geometry. The colors are beautiful, and in that piece that we are showcasing now, you can see the hyperrealism of the object floating. Here we have Julio Le Parc, that is a master, Argentinian master from the 1960s. These pieces were designed, but then later developed, in, some of them in the 2000s, uh, but they were designed in the 60s when Julio Le Parc won the um, Lion Prize in the Venice Biennale in the 66. Here we have Lao Gabrieli, an artist from Argentina. This is painted on silk. She has different pieces that are also painted on acrylic and mirror, pieces that the artist uh, developed under the tradition of cinetic and of art. Over here we have uh, the artist Worm, that is an artist from Colombia. He works with lettering, the lettering style, which is an important movement in the graffiti art. Then we have Cristina Getty, also an artist from Argentina that continues as well with the tradition of, of, of art. Aldo Chaparro, these are stainless steel pieces, pieces that um, he develops as sculptures in the walls and that he bends with his own body and body strength. It's beautiful pieces that are also painted with um, the card that is used to paint, the, the painting that is used to paint the cars, <laughs> uh, which also allows the piece to be um, presented in the outside space. We also present in each exhibit our showroom where we have the pieces of the previous show or the previous shows that we had, in this case Salustiano, that is an artist from Spain. He takes these beautiful subjects and paints them with oil on canvas and then later translates them into prints either over paper or over metal. Um, we also have Cecilia Paredes, an artist from Peru. She camouflages herself into the environment by, by painting her own body and using fabric that uh, help us to, re to remember that we are one with nature, something which we should never forget. Um, we also have Akaimo Cuesta, that is an artist uh, from Spain, questioning whether in the history of art there are as many females are there as there should be portrayed. So he changes the word history for her story with a question mark using uh, encyclopedias of art history. Lastly, we have Marina Vargas, an artist from Spain that uses the language of the tarot and numerology to uh, create these mantras through the language um, in, the, in the silver ink. Oh, 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 oh.